It's a pleasure for me to grace this occasion, being a recipient far back in 1983. And my memory recalls how we did walk onto this stage that motivated me and carried me through a cricket career that brought about test cricket and also ending up of winning the World Cup in 1996. When my friend Pati, the deputy editor of Sunday Times, requested me to grace his occasion, he also told me, you got to bat for 10 minutes. So I would bat for 10 minutes, but there would be a few good strokes, and there would be a few bad strokes as well. This evening, I will basically start with one question, which is regularly asked from me on why an under-19 cricketer takes such a long time to break into the international side. And I know why many of the cricket pundits ask this question. That is, going back into the 80s and all to the early 90s, many under-19 cricketers walked into the national side within about three to four years after they left school. We were fortunate, in a way, in the 80s and the early 90s, that cricket was not so structured as it's today. Today, it's so well structured, it's developed in most part of Asia and the rest of the world. So that came about an A-team concept and then emerging concept as well. So today, the under-19 player do have loads of opportunities to be recognized because of the A-team concept. All the test-playing nations do have A-teams, and within these nations, they do play cricket three, four days, and also at one day. And I am soon believe that they also come in playing T20 games. So this gives the opportunity for the under-19 player to break into the A-team. And once you get into the A-team, you also have a squad which Sri Lanka cricket has been nurturing over the last two decades, which is called an emerging squad. So you get an opportunity to be regularly the emerging squad. So this structure, which has come about due to the development of cricket, in Sri Lanka and various other countries gives the opportunity for a team player to develop into a national player and also the under-19. So because of this structure, the under-19 player takes time to mature and become an international player. Way back in the 80s, when cricket was played, and there was to be a maximum of three tours a year. So we at that time would be hoping that another test playing nation would stretch their arm out and give us tours. Must say that Australia was one nation that helped us through this process when they invited us repeatedly, sometimes every three years, for a test or two tests. And also, if you play regularly and don't miss out any games, you would play a maximum of 15 one days a year. And if you don't miss out again, you would maximally play three to four test matches a year. Today, my dear friends, the national team plays an average over the last five years about 40 ODIs a year and plays 13 to 17 test matches a year. So that's the opportunity the under-19 cricketers who are here to have, and that's the motivation they would have to continue. I would also like to highlight a few things on where the cricket fraternity, or key people, I would say, who plays a role in the under-19 cricket to take note of. 
as I've been a selector for the last eight months, I was also fortunate to be a part of the Under-19 World Cup tour, which about one month into our appointment, was asked to select a World Cup squad. Along with the junior selectors, we did select a squad, and also I was fortunate enough to spend about two weeks with the team in New Zealand. It was experience at a different level, because in the past two under-19 World Cups, I have been as a referee. But this time I was a selector, and I was able to look on the other side of the coin, or how things work in and out of a dressing room. One key thing that we learned, the coach, the support staff, and the rest of my selectors, is that preparation was key. Unlike the World Cup for the men seniors, under-90 World Cup is played every two years. So that gives a good 18 months for the coach and the support staff to prepare for it. England in particular, select the under-17s and nature and prepare them for the World Cup. Australia do have a mix. They do mix some of the senior players with the World Cup hopefuls and prepare with them, with South Africa does as well. And then they have been successful at it. For example, if I may say, we toured England about one and a half years ago and played there under 19s, which we came to know all the boys were under 17. And we beat them hands down, very convincingly. But unfortunately, at the World Cup, things were just the opposite. So we intend as selectors, Sri Lanka cricket tend to plan for this, and we would need the support from the schools association, from the principals, mass in charge, and the coaches as well. A few things I would leave about this evening with you, especially the principals, to encourage your students to play many sports as possible. Why? Because they need to develop the competitive edge, not only in cricket, but the other games, experience the win and losses, and also develop their physical strength. Many players in the 80s and the 90s, if you may have an opportunity to talk to them today, they would say that they played two or three or even four different discipline or sports in school. They still had time. They still had time to study. They still had time to excel in them. Mass in charges, who does the yeoman service and plays the cog in it, who is the middle man in the whole thing, needs to coordinate with the principal, the coach, and the players. And their role is to ensure that these players are looked after, not only physically, but most important, mentally as well. That they would, they, they would know the background of the players, that if they would have been in touch with the parents and ensure they are mentally prepared as well. For coaches, which is a very difficult task, and I know that the coaches are under pressure to ensure that their schools deliver the expectations throughout the season. So I know many coaches, unfortunately, would want to win at any cost. And I've experienced it in the last couple of years that they tend to do that because they want to ensure their job is intact. Unfortunately, I come across where coaches, who knows that there are issues with the bowler's arm, but encouraged to bowl a wrong way. And those bowlers who has shows a lot of potential and very successful when they come into the mainstream of club cricket are sidelined because of these issues. I'm not pointing finger at any particular coach or coaches, but I need to send out this message that the principal mass in charge and the coach should look at the bigger picture, look at Sri Lanka cricket and also the players' future as well. So I believe that from Sri Lanka cricket point of view, would rally around the coaches and the selectors of schools 
and their representatives and ensure that we'll work together to bring the under-19 World Cup to Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka school cricket is best in the world and there is no doubt about it. You talk to any cricket pundit anywhere in the world who knows about school cricket and he will agree. But having the best system or having the best people managing it has not brought about results to it. We are not the one, the under-19 World Cup. So I ask everybody involved in it to rally around and then in 2020 that we will bring the under-19 World Cup to Sri Lanka. I would fail this afternoon if I don't salute Sunday Times and Dialogue for their continuous efforts to recognize, honor, and reward these players at school level. And I believe that these two parties together would continue this for many more years. And I wish all the winners and the other cricketers who did prop up and help their teammates to achieve the goals what they have did over the past year. Congratulating them, I would end this. Thank you very much.